In for review this time is a piece of foundation equipment. The machine is the BG28H and at the end of the box the maker of the real machine is Bauer. But this is a model and for this one Bauer have gone to Conrad and it's model number 2524. It's quite a big box so let's put it on the Weybridge and it's about four pounds seven ounces or if you prefer just over two kilograms. The box is high quality and opens in the style of a presentation case. And the first thing we see is an instruction sheet and we'll take a look at that shortly. Next we have a layer of foam rubber and we can take that out. Next we have a layer of foam rubber and we can take that out. And that gets us to the model. Here is the instruction sheet and it starts with a parts list. And then it goes through the various stages of putting the model together. There are quite a lot of individual steps to follow, so you have to look at the instructions carefully. For the last part of the packaging, there is some tape to remove, and that's because the reeving for the crowd sledge is already done in the factory. We start the assembly with the machine on site, fresh from the factory. And the first thing to do is to raise up the mast. And the hydraulic rams that control it are quite stiff. We're following the Conrad instructions and we raise up the mast foot next and click it into place. And then we go to the top end of the mast where we fold out the mast head. As you can see, there's already some reeving done. So you need to be careful about moving the parts and make sure you don't break any of the ropes. Once the mast head gets in position, it's locked in place with a pin. But we'll talk a little more about that later on. Before we go any further, just make sure all of the ropes are on the sheaves. And we move on to the next stage, which is to raise the mast in a vertical position. Again, this is a good workout for the muscles because the hydraulic rams are very stiff. But we just need to go smoothly and gently until we get it into a vertical position. And then the whole assembly goes forward until it's resting on the foot. Small keys are provided to operate the functions. And we'll start by operating the top winch, which is the crowd winch. And you can see the sledge is going up the mast. We can now add on the rotary drive complete with its Kelly bar installed and it hooks over and then clips into place. At this point, we'll move the casing driver up and fit it underneath the rotary drive. And we'll move on to the auxiliary winch. This is the middle winch and it's actually got a piece of tape installed to keep the rope on the drum. And it's hard to get to, so here we're using a pair of pliers just to pull the tape off of the drum. This is the auxiliary winch, and as you can see, there's already a hook attached to the end of the rope. We keep unwinding on the winch and take the rope up to the top of the mast. And then it gets run over the small jib at the top, and that gives us, in effect, a small crane. We'll move the hook lower a little bit later on. Next, we go to the lowest winch, which is the main winch. And we need to unwind some rope off of that and take it to the top of the masthead. We then need to carefully thread the rope over the sheaves at the top. And as you can imagine, this is a job best done before you have any alcoholic drinks. With the last bit of threading done, the rope can be then taken down to the top of the Kelly bar. And here there's a good old fashioned tying off operation. Feed the rope through and tie any type of knot that you want. Once that's done, you might want to just go to the next stage, which is to do a bit of hair cutting and make the job look neat. Following the instructions, the auxiliary rope is then unwound and the hook is clipped on at the bottom of the mast. And this is like a kind of parking place for when the drilling is in operation. And you just need a little bit of tension on the rope to make sure that the hook doesn't come undone. Next, we apply some detailed parts. And there are four step irons which clip into the crawler tracks. The steps are plastic parts and they clip in securely. The plastic mirror is unsilvered and it clips onto the grab rail. 
which also means you can rotate it in for transport mode. There's a large metal grab rail which slots in outside the cab and that's a tight fit and it stays in place very well. The fiddliest part of the model is the light bar above the roof of the cab and for working mode you can slide it out about halfway but you have to fiddle with it to get it to stay in place. There's a large walkway platform which is under the cab and that slides out nicely. And for working mode we need to extend the width of the track frames. Up on the roof of the machine there are folding handrails and as you can see these are articulated. They do move quite easily but once you set them in place they do stay in position. Next we need to add the exhaust pipe on and that's a metal part which locates in a hole in the roof. Finally it's nice to have a model with removable counterweights and these ones stack easily on the back of the machine and you can vary the amount that you put on if you want. With the model complete let's put it on the way bridge and we see that it's very nearly three pounds or for the metric fanboys it is 1.35 kilograms. Lastly a quick dim check for height and it's about 18 inches or 45 centimeters. Starting with the crawler tracks and they are metal and the paint finish is typical for Conrad tracks. The track frames are quite detailed and the separate stairs add to the look. The metal platform outside the cab has a nice texture and the grab rail is metal and the detailing of the cab is good. There's a mirror and some nice window seals and you can see there's some nice interior detailing too. At the front there's a windscreen wiper and there's a plastic guard on top of the roof. Behind the cab there's a metal ladder and the paint finish and the graphics are to a high standard. The energy efficient power logo is very nice. The counterweight slabs are well formed with a nice finish and nice graphics as well. A highlighting of the detailing is on the other side of the body and that's the painted mesh grills. Also nicely detailed are the hydraulic lines which run from the body up to the equipment. The ram jackets are plastic and they are very slightly off colour compared to the metal parts. The folding handrails on the roof are plastic but they look good. There are more textured walkways on the roof. Moving on to the mast and the mast support structure nearly all of the parts are metal. With the main exception being the hydraulic ram jackets. On this side of the model the winches have holes to enable the keys to be fitted. And the mast itself is well done with cut out holes and an authentic looking mast head. The sheaves on the model are metal. The connecting pin is shown here fitted as per the instructions but the model looks much better if we reverse the pin and then it doesn't look quite so obvious. Moving on to the Kelly bar the top section is plastic but the bar itself is metal. Obviously it's not telescopic like the real thing but what does look like the real thing is the rotary drive complete with all its springs. Again there's lots of metal used and that includes the casing driver. In fact even the drilling bucket is made of metal. Out we go onto a rough test track and the crawler tracks perform very well. You can just push the model along and the tracks roll very smoothly and it's very satisfying. Raising up the mast a little allows us to rotate the machine and the stiff hydraulic rams make sure that the mast doesn't settle back down. Rotation of the model is nice and smooth. Of course this is a drilling machine and you can simulate the drilling because you can rotate the Kelly bar and the functionality is very good. The drilling bucket is also very good because it's got an opening flap at the bottom and if you need to shake the contents out you can. To simulate drilling we can stand the machine on its box and then we can rotate the Kelly bar as we drill the fresh air. 
When you finish the work on site, you can then strip the machine down and use it as a transport load. Unfortunately, it's not possible to remove the drilling tool from the end of the Kelly bar. But what you can do is to take off the top of the Kelly bar, and that lets you remove the Kelly bar from the rotary drive. You can also detach the casing driver, so transport loads can be quite realistic. It is interesting to see that Bauer has moved to Conrad for this latest model, and Conrad has done a great job with it. There's some very nice detailing, and the functionality is really good too. Overall, this is a high quality model, which is rated as excellent. Excellent.